So we're here again with the John Snow 1854 cholera death map. And this is one of the course examples of spatial analysis that's talked about first aid GIS, first aid epidemiology, so forth. And what we've done so far is we have proven or at least supported the hypothesis of John Snow that the Broad Street Pump is the transmission medium for the cholera deaths through visualization, through changing these symbologies. We've done this through tabular data analysis, so we can actually check out a table that we made earlier, deaths by street. Um, and these are all in previous videos that you can see on my on my YouTube channel. Um, also, um, we've done this through Thiessen polygons here, and we've done this through uh, looking at where 67% of the deaths have taken place with this ellipsoid. We've done the death mean center and all the previous videos we pretty much have kept on supporting the same hypothesis over and over again that the broad street pump is the source of the cholera death and so the last um the last analysis i want to do is do a raster analysis and do a density analysis through a kernel density and so just to make sure again that we can do this right we're going to want to um, do geoprocessing and turn on the extension sorry customize and look under the extensions and then once we look under the extensions we want to make sure that we have the spatial analyst extension on um, that's going to allow us to do the uh, density calculation and this is what a lot of people call hot spots a lot of times hotspot analysis and so what this is going to do is going to tell us the density of death that's taking place any at any given point like for example even though this area here, and I'm going to zoom into it, may not have any death going on right there. It's around all these places that do have death. So if we do death density, we might find out that this area actually has a high death density, even though it's not on a particular point. And it's because we're changing this kind of uh, discrete data set over into a continuous data set of the raster. And so if we go look into the spatial analyst and we look at the um, spatial analyst tools, and under the spatial analyst tools, we look at the uh, density toolbox, and then we go to kernel, kernel density. This is going to be the tool that we're going to run. And a kernel density is interesting because it kind of weights uh, the the uh, contribution of a particular point in the raster density calculation. It doesn't do an equal weight. It does a weight that the closer the things are, the more the more weight they give it and so the it pretty much produces a very smooth raster which is kind of something that's that's nice for us to look at um, so anyways if I go here to kernel density and I want to do this based off of the deaths that's taken place and remember our population field called count that's gonna be the number of people who died we go to the output rasters and we want to put that in our uh, geo database and I'm gonna call it kernel density death 2 that's fine Output cell size, I'm going to change that to 2 just because those trailing decimal points isn't very interesting. I'd rather have something that's like in uh, 2 meter increments, for example. I want to switch out the area units to uh, square uh, meters here. And in my search radius, I'm going to put in uh, 100 uh, as my search radius. So it's going to look over 100 meters. And um, and then that's the different ones. Those are the settings I want to do. Again, these settings you can change them all different ways to get different outputs. So you really want to be careful with what settings you choose here. So you want to choose things that make sense. A hundred meter search radius is a pretty conservative search radius for this. Um, but if I do too big or too small, it can end up changing the way the hotspot looks. And so this is going to be something that you want to be careful about. But anyways, I'm going to choose 102 and let that run. And what's nice about this is that it does help support the hypothesis, but for the lay person looking at this, uh, it's really powerful to be able to tell them that's where the hotspot is. And you'll see what I mean whenever the uh, raster finally comes through. I remember if you get kind of impatient, you can go to geoprocessing results, and then under that, under the current session, you can see the kernel density running over here. Uh, but basically, our, our process is running, and we just kind of wait it out. Uh, but so let's just wait it out and so now that has finished up the kernel density and you can see here in our results here it says kernel density is done it changes over to a tool from a from an hourglass 
And here we go. Here's our uh, debt density now that's that's taking place. If I turn off the debts that happen, and I can see here a nice gradient. Uh, and this is the amount of debts per square meter. And what you can see here, this concentration that's just visualizing the hot spot of where the broad street pump. So if you're in you, in you, the, you can see here clearly the closer you are to the broad street pump, the closer, the more debts are taking place. And that's what's nice about this uh, kernel density analysis that really helps in visualizing a hot spot. And so that's just another hot spot. So remember, we got this proven in so many different ways now. And so um, sometimes I think it's nice to go through here and go to the properties and then um, check out the display uh, or yeah display no I means here yes and then transparency and I can change this transparency to say like 50% transparency it makes it like kind of cool to see that kind of concentration maybe I can drop that make it a little less transparent let's make it a 35% transparent and then you can get this nice kind of view of the chances of debt taking place right here on the Broad Street Pump. So, you know, that wraps it up. All the different ways that we have proven now that, um, or at least supported strongly the hypothesis. And remember, this is pretty interesting because at this time, they, we still didn't even know um, how the transmission was taking place. We didn't understand germs and so forth. And so it's pretty amazing to show that, you know, just through this type of analysis, we can really pinpoint very closely to what the, the transmission medium is, which is water.